Now, if it ain't looking like much, that's because you just ain't looking hard enough. Folks, the hot fixes keep on rolling out, and Clay continues their trend of not only delivering big changes in small packages, but is still tweaking things completely unrelated to the current updates. So let's discuss. And we're gonna start with a big one. The ability to now transform any normal bird into a moonblind crow or a misshapen bird with the help of the lunar experiments. The process seems entirely random regardless of the bird, but certainly appears to prefer the former as you can see right here. However, both are just gonna work just fine when it comes to the overall potentials, so no worries there. Remember now, when caged, these rats with wings produce rotten eggs when fed meat, and rot if it's veggies, instead of the usual normal eggs and crop seeds, so be sure to use this to your advantage now. And if you don't remember how to get the lunar experiment, you need to activate Hollowed Knights. The next biggest adjustment, however, has got to be to one of my favorite mods of all time, Skitter Squids. Added way back when, as a way for those without caves who have access to light bulbs, the soon-to-be Calamari still only dropped a bulb 33% of the time. That's not great, and that's not even factoring in how rare they can be at times. After today, though, we will never have to worry about such things, as Skitter Squids now offer a guaranteed light bulb and monster meat with each kill in this update to the updates. It's good stuff. But what's this? Another one of them random character refreshes among a quality of life release. Well, yes, but actually no. For you see, Warley here has indeed received some love, but it ain't much. Not if you have a better memory than he does, that is. The guy can now examine crockpot dishes to indicate to us if he has eaten it too recently in order to avoid his stat penalties from munching on the same crockpot nonsense over and over and over again. And I get it, that's nice, sure. But can people really not remember a two-day cooldown for Pete's sake? That said, I suppose it is a quality of life thing among a quality of life update, so we'll let it pass. To continue then, that relatively new fencing sword that also came out of nowhere this year can now rotate masts. Well, masts on land, that is. And the entirely new mannequins of a little drama. Now, for most players, this thing is not going to be worth a single second of your time but I'm sure base builders are rejoicing today, so enjoy it. But speaking of these mannequins, lanterns and the like will now no longer be producing light while in their hands to help avoid wasting them, sure, but also to negate a potential quote-unquote infinite light exploit at the end of the day. But you know what we can now abuse without annoyance? The space bar around a pinching winch. The seafaring machine always kinda got in our ways when loot gathering while on our admittedly very small nautical circles. However, now we have to manually trigger the thing so we can go loot gathering all day long. And that's nice. As are the continued introductions of HD textures that we have been getting lately, with the two new ones being for the many succulents of the Oasis Desert and the Shadow Thurple of all things. But you'll love to see it. And there you have it, everyone. Yet another hotfix for Don't Starve Together's latest Updates, a little drama. But to be honest, I am starting to forget all about the drama myself, as it's the quality of life nonsense that is absolutely stealing the show for sure. Seriously, the game is changing so much, and it's being done by such small updates to the update like this, and at this rate, I'm not even sure any of us knows what to expect. Whatever it is, though, I'll be there to cover it. Thanks for watching, folks. Well, wish to all. At this point, I would anticipate the update officially releasing around Hollowed Night's time, but I'll see you in the next one regardless. Bye-bye.